All right, so pre-calculus 30, section 2.3, I have put this question up on the board a few minutes ago. Um, uh, in class, you've had a couple minutes to think about this. It says, how would you solve this equation? The equation that I've given you is the square root of x minus 4 equals 5. So let's talk about, first of all, when, we're, when I'm asking you to solve an equation, you have one variable that you're trying to solve for, right? So we're trying to solve for the unknown quantity here, x. Right? I asked you to think about that and share your thoughts with the neighbor. So, really quickly, um, anyone want to volunteer how you went about finding the value for x? Square. Okay. Okay, so this is a square root. So, you're going to square that term here. So, you're going to go like this if it's root x minus 4 equals 5. So you're going to square this, right? Is there anything else you have to do? And the 5, thank you. Okay, so if we do that, what do we get when we square a square root? They basically, yeah, they undo each other, right? So, so this is, looks like this. Okay, now this is a pretty simple equation. And did you get x equals 29 here then? All right, very good. Yeah, that's great. And we double check that, of course. You put 29 in there. 29 minus 4 is positive 25. The square root of that is 5. That checks out. Any other, anything else? What else? Any other ideas? No? Okay. So the big, the big push here for this section is to solve equations both algebraically and graphically. Okay, so I'm going to teach you today how to solve equations graphically. But before you get your uh, graphing calculators out, what I want to go through is something that seems maybe pretty obvious, but I know a lot of students have struggled with this in the past. What is the difference between a radical equation and a radical function? <laughs> uh, and honestly, this has been a little bit of a tricky thing for a lot of people. This is a radical equation. It is an equation that has a radical sign in it, and it has an unknown quantity one unknown quantity. That's a radical equation. A radical function also has a radical in it, okay? But it has a y or a f of x. So a radical function uh, would have um, two variables, okay? So there's a difference. So a function is this. You can solve a radical equation. That means you can find the x. When we say solving a radical function, uh, that doesn't really mean the same thing as solving a radical equation. Solving a radical function, what might that mean? Um, I don't know, finding pairs of values that would make the equation true? Yeah, we don't normally say solve a radical function. We could say, what are the roots of the function? What are the zeros of the function? What are the intercepts of the function? Because we're, we're referring to a graph of some sort, right? But we don't usually say solve. If we're finding the roots, which we're going to do, or the zeros, roots, or zeros of a radical function, how you do that is you write the corresponding radical equation. Okay? So they're used in concert with each other to solve. So you can solve an equation. All right. So, moving on. Let's talk about graphing because you kind of got this algebraically uh, figured out. Yes, we want to undo the root sign to liberate this x under here. So, how do we undo a root sign? We square it. Of course, it's an equation. What you do to one side, you have to do to both sides. That's why we squared both sides. All right? If there's more than one term on one side, we have to square the whole side, not each individual term. So, if there's two terms on one side, we have to square that as a group, that whole side times itself, which I'll get into that as well. But let's pause for a second, let you get your graphing calculators out, and I'll get mine fired up here too, and then we'll solve this very same thing, we'll solve it graphically. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and get your, up and grab a calculator here from the top. All right, so if we use the same equation, there's two different ways you could solve graphically, okay? Two different. I'm going to show you both ways. The first way is to treat 
um, each side of the equation as a separate radical function. Okay? What I want to do is I want to find out where this side is the same as this side. And in that, we're going to be able to determine what this x is. So, the first way that you can do this is by rewriting the radical equation as two corresponding radical functions. Okay? And you simply take whatever's on the left side and treat it as a separate y equals function. So you go like this. You go second function x squared here. Oops. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, so square root of x minus 4. So we're going to graph that first. But we're also going to graph the other side. Now, this is y equals what? Well, it's y equals 5. Yeah. So let's go to the second line, and we'll just put in 5 there. Now, before you hit graph, or maybe you have, it's okay, but we are going to have two functions that are going to be graphed. Now, if I am going to look for the solution, what what am I looking for when I graph two, two functions, two, let's say, lines, because this is what you've done before. If I graph two lines and I'm looking for the solution to that system, what am I looking for? The intersection point, okay? And, of course, because um, the only variable really in these functions is x to, to solve for, right? We're going to have an x and a y, yes, but look at what I'm looking for here, and I'm looking for the x value. So if I graph this as two separate functions and look for the intersection point, then I can find my answer. Now, I've, the screen is going to be a little wacky here. So here's our first function, and there it is. Oh, look at that function. looks like it was like chasing it. Isn't that neat? Did you guys see that? This thing was kind of going up kind of slow, and this thing came zooming by the screen. Anyways, it's like a little cartoon. Okay, so are they going to intercept? Is there a solution? Well, algebraically, we thought, yes, x equals 29 is a solution. So how come there's no intersection point here? Because I cannot see past x equals 10 here. So, window. x max. We need, we're, we're guessing 29, so let's, let's go at least, you know, past 29. Let's go 35. Let's graph that, and I'll see what happens. We have this one coming. Boom! Look at that. Well, it's like a missile or something that intercepts it. Anyways, okay, my imagination. So it looks like, it's a little tough to see, but it looks like there's an intersection point around here somewhere, right? So do you remember how to find an intersection point using the graphing calculator? Second function, trace button, which is the calculate menu, and five, intersect, yes. So first curve, yes. Second curve, yes. Guess, please. There we go. Look at this x equals 29, and that's going to happen at y equals 5. So look at, there is your solution. The x value is your solution. Everyone see that? So, let's take a moment to uh, write down what we just did and uh, as, as notes here. So, to solve a radical equation graphically, what we do is we graph each side of the equation as a separate radical function then determine the intersection points. Now, there probably is going to be just one intersection point, unless if there's more than one, I'll put that in brackets there, if there's one intersection point, then guess what? There's one solution. If there's more than one intersection point, we could have more than one solution. Right? And what happens if there's no intersection points? Like, for real, there's no intersection points, then what? Then there's no solution. Okay, so let me just go over that, okay? The, the intersection points would be the solution. If there's no intersection points, then there's no solution. So let's just write that down as well. No intersection points, there is no real solution. Now I put real in here because um, we're talking about real numbers, but there are other numbers that are not real, complex numbers, okay? And there would be a solution, but you don't know about that math yet, so... I'm just going to say no solution for now, but just so you don't come back at me and say, Mr. Maxwell, I went to university and uh, there is a solution to that. Hello. So I don't want you to say that because I already know, yes, there is one, okay, but 
You don't know about the answer yet, so... Okay. Now, what about this one? Root x minus 4 equals negative 5. Okay? So here would be an example where we would try and solve this, and if we wanted to do it graphically... Now, look at... Actually, let's just go back here. Take the uh, case, okay, square both sides, no problem. That's x minus 4 equals 25, x equals 29, okay? There we go. Let's plug that back in to check. And when you do that, you should see there's a bit of an issue. What's the issue? Well, 29 minus 4, and if you take the square root of that, it should be, well, positive 5 or negative 5. Um, you know, is it plus or minus? Well, when you take the square root of something, it could be plus or minus. But let's just check the graph, and then we'll come back to it, okay? So, y equals, let's just change this to negative 5, and we will graph it again, and this is what you see. Oh, we have a horizontal line, y equals negative 5 here, and we have this radical function here. Does this ever dip back down? Does it come down here? No. If you wanted to check that, just go ahead and have a lot of fun there. Let's put this x max is, max is 1,500. What did I just do? x max, 1,500. That's way... Okay, so look at that. See the graph there? It's still... It's going up pretty high there. It's not coming back down. And just to double check, let's make that y max to 1,500 too. Okay, that's a bit much. Anyways, here's the graph. It... The, Okay, that didn't work. Okay, what about 150 maybe? Okay. I'm just trying to get, okay, see look, it's coming up, and it's still increasing forever. There's y minus 5, you're not going to catch up, okay? So there's no intersection point, there's no solution. Well, that sort of didn't really make sense, because the square root of a number could be positive or negative. Okay, here's a little hint, all right? When you have a question where you are given a, a radical, okay, a radical, you're given a radical, this will always yield a positive value. Okay, so this is no good. That's bad. No solution. If you have to take the square root of a positive number, it is okay to say that the answer to that is plus or minus. So what I'm saying is that if we have uh, x squared equals 9, and I'm solving for x, doing this is totally okay. I'm taking the square root as an operation. The answer is plus or minus 3. That is good. But if in the question you're given the radical, then it's always looking for the positive uh, version of that. Okay? And, I mean, we just supported that graphically, right? If we didn't do it that way, we might say that x equals 29 is a perfectly good solution for this, but it's not. So there's got to be an error there. So graphing has its merits, right? If you don't remember all these little rules, you know, that's actually not the answer. And graphing, you would see that. That's wrong, bad, okay, evil. All right, so um, intersection point is a solution. We use the x value of that intersection point. If there's no intersection point, there's no real solution, okay? Let me, let me talk to you about uh, method two, okay? Graphing method number two. And we'll use the same as the original question. So root x minus 4 equals 5. Okay? Method number 2. Alright. Method number 2, basically, what you do is you get everything over to one side of the equation and let it equal 0. So if I take a 5 over to the other side, I would have to subtract 5 from both sides. And I get this. Root x minus 4 and then outside of that square root sign, I get minus 5 equals 0. See that? Now, really, this method 2 is exactly the same as method 1, except we do not have to graph y equals 0. What is y equals 0, actually? It's the what? It's the x-axis. Thank you. And so if I graphed y equals square root of x minus 4 minus 5, and I wanted to find out where the intersection point between this and y equals 0, really what I'm finding is x intercepts. You see that? So method 2 is sort of the same as method 1, except you don't have to actually graph on your calculator y equals 0 and do the intersection calculation. 
you can just go to the root function or the zero function. All right. So I'll just let me back up a little bit. Back up the tape. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this. We're going to graph one function. Find the roots. Okay. So let's let's write that down. So here's the instructions. Move every term to one side of the equation, which we've done over here, and graph that corresponding radical function. So you're going to graph this y equals right here, and then you're going to find the roots. So uh, with the exact same uh, situation here, and uh, I'm not going to have two anymore. Instead, I'm going to have just one, and that's going to be uh, yeah, minus five, minus five. Clear that. I'm going to hit zoom uh, standard just to get rid of that 1500 thing. Now, look at this radical equation. Do you remember how the old one started up here? It was the same shape. See that? What I've done is I've moved this equation down five units. And so, do you see how now, if I take a look at this window x max 38, let's say. So now, you see how this has moved down? Now, the solution becomes the, uh, the root. See that? So, you just find the root. Second function, trace, uh, the zero. Number there, number two. Now, it's going to ask you left boundary. Yes. You're going to have to do this. Okay, you have to get this cursor over to the other side. And yes, calculating the intersection point was actually maybe a little less time, but that's okay. So left bound, right bound, yes, yes, x equals 29. See that? So your intercept, your x-intercept is 29, 0. That's another way you could find x equals 29 as a solution. Questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions with that here, let me give you a question to work on. And uh, it looks like, looks like this. So this example says solve algebraically, so that is showing your work on your paper and doing it the you know algebra method and graphically, so you can use your graphing calculator there, to solve this equation. Here it is. Root x plus 5 equals x plus 3. So give that a try, and I'll reveal some of my work here in a minute. All right, here's my work. Um, the couple things that I noticed when I was walking around watching your work. Okay, here's the biggest thing right here. Everyone, watch this. This happens over and over and over again. When you square this, please do not do this. It is not this. You cannot square each term. <laughs> you can't do that. It's the whole binomial is squared. So that means the whole binomial is multiplied by itself. It's actually, it's not that, it's x plus 3 times x plus 3 where you have to distribute. Okay? So that, don't feel bad if that was you because a lot of uh, students have done this over the years, but please do not do that. That is not okay. The only way that that exponent distributes is if this was x times 3. Then you could write it as x squared times 3 squared, but not plus. Not when there's a plus there. Can't do that. All right. So the other thing I noticed is that some of you stumbled a little bit on how to go past here. Factoring. Okay, if this is a 1, remember you're looking for numbers that multiply to this and add up to this. And those numbers are positive 4 and positive 1. That's how you would factor that. To go from here to some solutions, you let each factor equal 0. x plus 4 equals 0. That is, x equals negative 4. Same over here, x equals negative 1. Those are your two possible solutions. Now, when you factor a quadratic and use this zero product principle, <clears throat> or if you use the quadratic formula, algebraically, you will get two answers. But you always have to double check those answers in your original equation, right? Because as you see here, I double checked negative 4, and look what I got. I got root 1 equals negative 1, and that can't be. That's no good. So I reject 
this possible solution. I checked, oh, whoops, sorry, X the wrong one. I checked uh, negative one, this one's rejected. I checked a negative one, and that checks out. Okay, <laughs> so X equals negative one is my answer algebraically. The other thing I saw, the other thing, and uh, like I say, I'm, I'm glad I saw this stuff because we're getting this figured out. If you do this, guys, if you bring everything over to one side first, and then you decide to square both sides, you can't just square this and just square this and leave this alone. You, you can't do this, okay? You would have to square this whole side, which is going to be a little tricky. It's a lot of distribution. So what I would suggest, algebraically, just get the square root um, on its own on one side all by itself. Just do it that way. So that means we would leave this like this, and then you can square this whole side, which is really easy, right? And then this side is easy. So don't put everything over to one side and then square both sides. That's going to get tricky. Isolate the radical. If it's not isolated already, then square just the radical. All right. Okay. Now, I'll, uh, graphically, and here's my calculator, and turn it back on. So I've graphed this side and this side separately. And if, as you'll see, I have an intersection point right here. And does that look like it's at negative 4 or negative 1? Well, looks like it's at negative 1. Let's double check. I'm going to calculate that intersection point. First curve, yes. Second curve, yes. Yes, please. Negative 1. The y doesn't matter. It's the x that we're concerned about. And that confirms that what we did was right. There, okay, I remember the fifth thing now that I saw. The fifth thing. When you're graphing, okay, now this page is really messy, but when you're graphing, you can't, you cannot just go back to here and say, I'm going to graph this and find out what my solutions are. That is, that is a different question. Because that gets you both of these answers, which we know now that one of them is not right. So when you graph, okay, you have to go back to the original uh, equation. Because these two numbers that you've solved are legitimate solutions to this parabola, right? It's going to look like this. That's what this parabola looks like. There's negative 1, there's 4. So you're going to say, hey, yeah, two answers, they're both right, I'm good. But those answers don't work in here. So this is the one you have to graph, the original equation, or I guess this one up here. Okay? Now, was there anything else that you guys did wrong that I didn't see that you want me to talk about? Okay, because that is a very good question. You need to know how to do this question absolutely for sure.